Hello and welcome. You're watching the News at 6 with me, Ishan Russell. The News at 6 is all about the day's biggest developing stories and we'll be filling in on them over the next half hour. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. Campaigning ends for the 16th May polls in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry. Over 8 crore eligible voters to elect 404 MLAs in the two states and one union territory. On the second day of his visit, Sri Lankan President Maithripala Sirisena accompanies Prime Minister Modi to the Simasta Mahakumbh in Ujjain. There's amity with India under Modi is special and will improve. Twenty-four hour bandh called by the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha turns violent in Jharkhand. Over 550 people arrested across the state for stir against domicile policy. And Brazil gets an all-white male cabinet for the first time since 1979. Suspended President Dilma Rousseff calls it a farce, says it doesn't represent one of the world's most ethnically diverse nations. Our top story this evening, campaigning for the assembly elections in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry came to an end today. Polling for 234 seats in Tamil Nadu, 140 seats in Kerala and 30 seats in Puducherry will be held on the 16th of May. Meanwhile, the Election Commission has set in motion its machinery to ensure free and fair polling. Political parties making last-ditch efforts to woo voters. Wrapping up a fierce two-month-long campaigning for the elections in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry. In Kerala, an almost three crore strong electorate will cast in the single phase polling on May 16th. They will choose 140 lawmakers from 1,203 candidates, 109 of whom are women. Tamil Nadu will see a five crore eligible electorate choosing from 3,776 candidates for 234 assembly seats. Puducherry will have nine lakh voters casting their votes to elect 30 MLAs from among 344 candidates. 21 of them are women and one is a transgender. The instructions of Election Commission of India, so we want to increase the percentage of voting, one. Second, all the voters will cast their vote ethically. Right. Uh, we have around 25 lakh electorate. From the date on which the Commission has given no, uh, schedule of elections, we are intensively taking up sweep activities. Right. We have done a lot of uh, play cards, hoardings in many places. The Election Commission has taken all steps to ensure free and fair elections in all three states. It has also banned television channels and online portals from carrying political campaign-related news, video clips or debates till May 16th. Counting of votes in these states along with Assam and West Bengal will be taken up on May 19th. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. As the election campaign in Kerala ended today, all political parties gathered at the Pirukoda Junction in Thiruvananthapuram. Now, this is a traditional celebration where all the political parties go the, at this one central point. Our correspondent Akhilesh Suman was at that spot and brings us this report. In this election festival of Indian democracy, Kerala presents a unique example. This is the place in Thiruvananthapuram. This is the junction in Thiruvananthapuram. When after the poll, poll propaganda is over, every party comes here, every party raises their banner, raises their flags here, be it CPM red flag, be it Congress tricolor with hand, be it Bhagwa and green of BJP with lotus, every party comes here, there is no confrontation in between this party at this moment. This is a unique example that Kerala presents in the whole country, nowhere else it happens. This is the main junction of Thiruvanan Puram. It will be really a puzzle that what will happen in, the, in this election. But even BJP, who is a new entrant in this election, you can see there is, there is no monopoly of any of the party. You can see the flag of BJP. You can see the election symbol of BJP. Every party is represented here. And the propaganda is over. Every party will go home. And on 16th May, the people, the voters will come to the polling station and they will vote for whatever party of their choice. It will be interesting to see that who comes in power this time. Akile Soman with camera person Om Prakash for Rajasava Television in Thiruvannam. 
And let's go across to Thiruvananthapuram from where we're joined by our correspondent Akhilesh Suman who got us that report. Akhilesh, indeed celebrations are now happening over there. Campaigning has come to an end. But uh, I mean, a nervous 48 hours for all the candidates uh, till the 19th when the results come out. But uh, as far as things stand right now, who has the upper hand? Uh, Isan Rasel, it is very difficult to tell that who is the upper hand because I was showing you the flags of every political party, the red flags, the green, white, uh, and uh, uh, Bhagwa, every, every type of flags are in equal proportion. And you can rather say that BJP, who is the new entrant in the whole whole gamut of this state, its flags are more than any other flags. So right. uh, from the surface, you cannot say that who is going to have the upper hand. But naturally, there are the two major fronts here, the LDF and the UDF, who are the main contenders for this, uh, for this election. And India is trying to sneak into this whole political atmosphere and trying to get some seats. Though BJP is asserting that it is uh, fighting to make the government, but it is uh, really an ambitious program for BJP to get uh, its own government in the state. But uh, uh, while people are telling that uh, BJP might gain some, uh, some, some votes, some no more percentage of votes, but the real fight will remain between UDF and LDF in this election, Isan. All right, Akhilesh, we'll leave that over there. Thanks very much for that update. Akhilesh has been traveling across Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry for us. Uh, and thanks very much for that update. Also, another correspondent of ours has been traveling these days. Ravindra Sharan now joins us live. And uh, Ravindra, as far as uh, the big issues that have come up uh, during the campaign, if you just uh, really briefly touch upon them, what would they be? Is corruption a big issue? Because th this is an issue that has resonated from Kerala to Tamil Nadu to Puducherry as well. Yeah, Rachel, that's right. Corruption is a big issue in this election, especially in, in Tamil Nadu, because both the political parties, which have, the arc, arc rivals, which have Dravidian fold, has been accused by the smaller parties like the BJP and the PMK and the DMDK PWF alliance of corruption, nepotism. These are the main issues. This is a big issue, of course. And uh, both the political parties, which are... Uh, trying to struggle for the in, uh, struggle of war, they are accusing each other of corruption as well. We have seen that uh, the Chief Minister Jayalalitha has to go to jail in a case of corruption uh, last year, though she has been later uh, released by a higher court in Karnataka higher court. Also, in the last UPA government, the many leaders of the DMK party has also been uh, charged with the corruption cases. Besides this, we have been right now travelling to Tiruvaru district, this is the district of the DMK Patriarch, non-Nigerian uh, uh, senior leader of the DMK, Karuna Nidhi. This is the birthplace. He has been representing in this house for the last 13 times and for, since 1956 he has been representing the constituency in assembly. This election is very crucial, especially for the uh, Dravidian fold parties, because this time uh, they have locked the horns with in a multi-corner contest. This is happening for the first time after a long gap of uh, at least two decades. When the DMDK, the PWF and the TMC alliance, they are giving a tough time to the uh, Dravidian parties and they can also... Uh, uh, they can also get some, get eat some of the share of the votes in this election. Also, right. the main important issues which I would like to highlight here is this election will be remembered for the maximum participation of female candidates in this election. Mm. More than 325 females are participating in this election. This is a very good news. Uh, also, on the other hand, this election will be remembered for some dark sports as well. Like uh, more than 100 crore of rupees has been seized by the election, various right. teams of election commission during the process of election in the last uh, two months after the model code of conduct came into being. Beside this, the important factor is that the Prime Minister himself has led the campaign of BJP. He has accused both the Dravidian parties that these are the responsible for the poor state of this uh, Tamil Nadu. They, they fail, the, both the Dravidian parties fail in the last a couple of decades to bring a single uh, multinational company or investors here right. and could not give a Pollyanna and a sanguination to the investors and this is the result that the unemployment is a big problem and the youth of Tamil Nadu has to shift their base from uh, Tamil Nadu to the other states or to abroad. These All right, so it might not be a direct contest over the there in, in Tamil Nadu in between the DMK and the AIDMK, the alliance partners, the alliances of course will play a critical role as to a host of other parties 
parties, whom, who will eat into whom's vote share. Ravinder Sharan and Akhilesh Suman will keep a track of all those developments for us as they happen. 16th, remember, is the polling and 19th is when the results come out. Now, as Ravinder was pointing out, Election Commission has been seizing a hoard of cash from uh, Tamil Nadu. In fact, it seized 570 crore rupees from three containers in Tirupur district in Tamil Nadu. The personnel accompanying the container said they were transferring the money from uh, State Bank of India in Coimbatore to Vishakhapatnam branches, but did not have the necessary documents. The flying squad of the Election Commission, along with uh, parliamentary forces, seized the cash on Saturday morning during a routine vehicle check. The containers, escorted by three cars, were given a chase when they didn't stop. A check revealed the amount kept in many boxes inside the containers. The men in the cars claimed to be policemen from Andhra Pradesh but were not in uniform and could not produce proper documents to substantiate their claims. The vehicles were taken to the district electorate in Tirupur. Now, a 24-hour bandh called by the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha against the new domicile policy turned violent in the state today. Hundreds of people were arrested for protests against the policy that the opposition parties allege is unfair to the tribals. Massive protest in Jharkhand. Many vehicles were set on fire and damaged on Saturday. 550 people were arrested after a 24-hour bandh called by the opposition parties against the domicile policy turned violent. Bharatiya Janta Party ka sarkar जो रघुवार दास के नेतृत्व में चल रही है वो आदिवासी मूलवासी का विरोधी है इसीलिए आज गांव से लेकर शहर तक आज ने अपना विरोध जताया The new policy states that people who lived in Jharkhand for 30 or more years will be considered residents The JMM wants the 1932 survey considered for eligibility to protect tribals जो भी बंद समर्थक आते हैं वो किसी भी बंद समर्थक को सड़क जाम नहीं करने दिया जाएगा सड़क पे आगजनी टायर जलाना ये सब चीज़ नहीं करने दिया जाएगा इसके लिए प्रशासन पूरी तरह से मुस्तैद है द डोमिसाइल पॉलिसी हैज बीन अ कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल इशू एवर सिंस द बर्थ ऑफ झारखंड इन द सन टू थाउजेंड बिसाइड द जे एम एम द आर जे डी सी पी आई एंड द झारखंड विकास मोर्चा प्रजातांत्रिक आर सपोर्टिंग द बंद ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टी now, two people have been detained for the murder of senior journalist Rajdeo Ranjan. Ranjan was shot dead in Sewan district in Bihar yesterday. His murder has triggered a political slugfest with BGP claiming that Jungle Raj has returned to the state. Ranjan was one of the two journalists killed uh, in the past week, the other being a journalist in Charkhand. Within a space of 24 hours, two journalists were shot dead in Bihar and neighboring Jharkhand. On Friday evening, Rajdev Ranjan, the bureau chief of the Hindi daily Hindustan, was shot dead in Bihar Sivan district. Five shots were fired at him from extremely close range near the Sivan railway station. Two people were detained in the case. Police say professional shooters could be involved in the killings. दिशा मिलेगी जांच को और कांड का स्पष्ट उद्भेदन होगा। तरस जो सीसीटीवी है उसका फुटेज नहीं मिला है। टेक्निकल जो एक्सपर्ट हैं उन्होंने देखकर बताया है कि इसमें रिकॉर्डिंग नहीं अवेलेबल है। तो उसको हम लोग फॉरेंसिक लैब से भी चेक करा लेंगे। रंजन वाज डिक्लेयर्ड डेड ऑन अराइवल एट killed under such circumstances, the state government must investigate and whosoever are responsible uh, need to be brought to justice because uh, an impression uh, should not be allowed to be created that uh, people are able to get away with any kinds of criminality and I am confident that the Bihar government will act and act decisively in order to bring the culprits to justice. Media reports said Ranjan had written against local politicians on several occasions evoking death threats from many quarters. Sivan is the stronghold of former RJD parliamentarian Mohammed Shahabuddin, who is serving a life sentence for the abduction and murder of two people in 2004. I am 
जो भी इस हत्या में अभियुक्त हैं उनको गिरफ्तार करके उनके विरुद्ध सख्त कार्रवाई करें स्थानीय स्तर पर जो खोजी पत्रकारिता है वो संकट में पड़ती जा रही है और जब वो अपराध के और भ्रष्टाचार के मामले खोलते हैं तो स्थानीय नेताओं को दिक्कत होती है लगता है कि दोनों घटनाएं शायद उसी का परिणाम है BJP used the opportunity to attack the state government over what the party claimed the deteriorating law and order situation in the state. Now a senior journalist has been shot dead. Before this, there are many reports of murder. What is happening? Is this what the people of Bihar had voted for? Nitishji's government was brought back on the hope that development would take place, not to bring back uh, Jungle Raj too. Meanwhile, in neighboring Jharkhand's Chatra district, 35-year-old Akhilesh Pratap Singh was shot dead by unidentified people near the Panchayat Secretariat of his village. Akhilesh worked for a local news channel. Chief Minister Raghubar Das condemned the incident. So far, there have been no arrests in the case. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today participated in the ongoing conference at the Simasta Kumbh Mela in Ujjain. The conference spread over several sessions is going to be uh, part of the ongoing Semastakum Mela on the banks of the Shipra River. Prime Minister Modi and Sri Lankan President Maithripala Sirisena also released a Semasta declaration at the Nunora village in Ujjain. Speaking at the valedictory session, Modi called for development of the inner self to overcome the problems of expansionism, global warming and militancy. Today, the world is going to be एक तरफ ग्लोबल वार्मिंग दूसरी तरफ आतंकवाद क्या उपाय है इसका आखिर इसके मूल में कौन सी चीजें पड़ी हैं होलियर देन दाव तेरे रास्ते से मेरा रास्ता ज्यादा सही है यही तो भाव है जो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट की ओर हमें घसीटता ले चला जा रहा है विस्तारवाद यही तो है जो हमें कॉन्फ्लिक्ट की ओर ले जा रहा है युग बदल चुका है विस्तारवाद समस्याओं का समाधान नहीं है हम हॉरिजॉन्टल की तरह ही जाए समस्याओं का समाधान नहीं है हमें वर्टिकल जाने की आवश्यकता है अपने भीतर को ऊपर उठाने की आवश्यकता है Now, Prime Minister Modi was accompanied by Sri Lankan President Maithripala Sirisena who also was in Ujjain at the Simastakum Mela and in fact took part in the closing ceremony of the Vecharik Mahakumbh. Apart from uh, Prime Minister Modi and Sri Lankan presidents, representatives of five countries and chief ministers of four states also attended the valedictory session. The Sri Lankan president also released the Simasta declaration with the Prime Minister. On Friday, Modi hosted a dinner for Sirisena, over which both sides uh, discussed all major bilateral issues, particularly problems being faced by Indian fishermen. Modi pitched for a permanent solution to the issue of frequent arrests of Indian fishermen by Sri Lankan Navy. The Sri Lankan president also visited the famous Sanchi Stupa in Madhya Pradesh. I am confident that our relationship will enhance and also blossom in the future. In addition, I appreciate the keen interest and commitment India has exhibited in socio-economic development in Sri Lanka. I thank India with great appreciation of such commitments. Now, the United States has backed India's entry into the elite group of nuclear suppliers group. The U.S. has said that India meets the missile technology control regime requirements and is ready for entry into the exclusive club. China and Pakistan, though, have opposed India's entry into the club. Defending its move, China claimed that several members of the 48-nation bloc shared its view that signing of the NPT was very important uh, standard for the NSG's expansion. U.S. sources were recently told uh, that uh, they are disappointed with the Chinese tactics of using Pakistan's non-credentials with the NSG to settle scores with India. Some other national news updates now nationwide. At least five people were killed after a major fire broke out in a building situated in Rajnagar area of Ghaziabad on Saturday. The fire broke out in the building of a marketing agency due to a short circuit in the air conditioner.
Dairy farmers of the Barga district of Orisha spilled uh, hundreds of litres of milk on Friday to protest against the Orisha State Corporate Milk Producers Federation over rejecting 20,000 litres of milk procured from Beden and Barpali area of the district. The farmer stopped an Omfed tractor, uh, uh, tanker rather, that was carrying uh, milk cans and spilled them on the road. The police on Friday arrested five Maoist rebels from Eastern Bihar for their involvement in the recent attack on a construction company. The attack took place in Baba Hans Construction Private Limited near the Bhagwanpur Mall on the 10th of May. The rebels were arrested from the Jahanabad area. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. Translation means converting knowledge into products useful for improving the quality of life. So we need to apply that knowledge to find solutions. And that is what we are trying to do you, you know, in this institute. Somebody who has understanding of biology, somebody who has understanding of medicine, somebody who has understanding of engineering. If a team is put together, can we then develop novel diagnostics? Watch Eureka with Dr. Sudhanshu Brati, Dean at Translational Health Science and Technology Institute, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. You're watching the news at 6. Some international news now. And Brazil's new interim president, Michel Temer, appointed a new all-male cabinet, inviting criticism that uh, it did not represent the country's ethic ethical diversity. Suspended uh, President Dilma Rousseff has pointed out that for the first time since 1979, Brazil will have a cabinet without a woman. Suspended Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff criticized the new interim government for being entirely made up of white male politicians. Rousseff said the cabinet did not represent one of the world's most ethnically diverse nations. Rousseff has denounced her removal as a farce and sabotage and has vowed to continue her legal fight. Obviamente, nós lutaremos para recompor uma base parlamentar no futuro. The new Brazilian cabinet under interim president Michel Temer has no women members for the first time since 1979. The new government's chief of staff said they were unable to find any woman suitable for the cabinet. The new administration, which seeks to rebuild the country's economy, will be in stark contrast to that of Dilma Rousseff, who had seven women in her cabinet. Teria que tomar essas medidas projetando, como foi dito aqui, curto, médio e longo prazo, porque esse é o caminho que terá que ser percorrido para nós resgatarmos a confiança, para nós resgatarmos a nossa viabilidade como Estado, bom prestador de serviço. Meanwhile, leftist demonstrators took to streets on Friday to protest the Senate's decision. Não posso concordar com o que está acontecendo. Não posso, porque a direita, inconformada com não ter ganho a eleição no voto, está querendo ganhar no tapetão. Isso não dá para se conformar. Vice-President Michel Temer will be the interim president during the impeachment trial of Rousseff. Temer has stressed that economic vitality is his key task and that he would do everything to protect and expand economic and social programs. The Senate suspended Rousseff from office for up to 180 days. She will face trial on charges of breaking budget rules. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, Hezbollah today said that its top military commander, Mustafa Badruddin, died uh, as a result of artillery shelling by a Sunni armed group in Damascus in Syria. Earlier, the group believed that Badruddin was killed by an Israeli airstrike. The Lebanese Shia group has announced his death on Friday and a military funeral was held for him on the same day. 55-year-old Badruddin was one of the highest-ranking officials in the group and believed to be responsible for its operations in Syria, where thousands of its members are fighting alongside Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Some more international news now and global buzz.
Amid escalation of tensions between the U.S. and China over the South China, China Sea, top uh, military commanders of the two countries held a video conference during which America underlined its right of freedom of navigation and upholding a rule of law in the waters. The video connection was lauded by both sides as a valuable channel of communication. Susanna Mashat Jones, the world's oldest person, has died, aged 116, leaving only one person born in the 19th century still alive. Jones, who co-founded a scholarship fund for young African-American women to go to college, was active in a public building's tenant patrol until the age of 106, when she... The United States is concerned about indications that Nigeria's Boko Haram jihadists are sending fighters to join Islamic State in Libya in increased cooperation between the two groups. Boko Haram has pledged loyalty to the Islamic State, which has seized parts of Libya, Syria and Iraq. But uh, little has emerged about the extent of cooperation. Italy has evacuated at least 13 Libyans for medical treatment after they were wounded in recent clashes and a bomb attack against troops battling Islamic State militants in Libya. This is the second time this year that the Italians have evacuated uh, Libyans wounded in Islamic State attacks. The defense capabilities possessed by the US, Russia and India are among the main factors driving China to modernize its nuclear force and bolster its strategic strike cap capabilities. This according to a report by the Pentagon, uh, which uh, presented to Congress detailing China's nuclear power. The Pentagon said uh, that the country was de uh, deploying new command, control and communication capabilities to its nuclear forces to improve control of multiple units in the field. Time now for all the sports action in Sportsbeat. The BCCI has called for a special general meeting on the 22nd of May to elect its new president after the resignation of Shashank Manohar. Anurag Thakur is likely to get the job, while Rajiv Shukla and MCA president Ajay Shikre are the other contenders. In the Italian Open Tennis, Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis will challenge Irina Camelia Begu and Monica Nicolescu of Romania for the place in the women's doubles final in Rome. They defeated Raquel Atao and Abigail Spears 6-4, 6-2. While in the other quarters, India's Rohan Bopanna and Romanian Florin Magea cruise past Philip Paul Schreiber and Viktor Troiki 6-3, 6-4. They will now face Vasek Pospisil and Jack Sock in the semis. Indian boxer Vijinder Singh knocked out Andres Soldra of Poland in a super middleweight contest in Bolton in the UK. Vijinder completed his sixth successive victory barely a minute into the third round at the Macron Stadium. He will now contest for the World Boxing Organization Asia title in front of his home crowd in New Delhi on the 11th of June. Senegal's Fatma Sambadi of Samora will be FIFA's first female Secretary General succeeding Jerome Wolf who has been banned from all football-related activity for 12 years. 54-year-old Samora has spent 21 years working for the United Nations. Her tenure at FIFA will start from June. Novak Djokovic maintained his supremacy over Rafael Nadal with seven successive victories over the Spaniard. Coming from behind in both sets, he finally managed a 7-5, 7-6 win, an encounter that lasted for nearly two and a half hours to reach the semi-finals of the Italian Open. Well, that's it from us. Goodbye.